Hello, I'm Jessica. It's when I was 14, a young, black-eyed, charming girl. At high school, I was considered a good-looking girl in my class. I have a good relationship with my friends. I feel so great at school, but at home, it was another world for me. My mother kept herself busy doing household chores, whilst my father was always engaged on his phone with his boss. My elder brother is the only guy who loves me a lot and takes care of my every little demand. Whenever I was upset, he made me feel better. He always brings chocolates and gifts for me. Once I wondered how he could manage all this stuff and straightly asked him about the gift and how he managed the cost. But like usual, with a warm smile, he avoided the topic. He hugged me and said, You're my only sister and I can do anything for you. The words sound pleasing and stop me from asking such questions. Life was as usual, and one day everything turned upside down. I still remember. It was a Saturday night, and the time was nearly 11 p.m. I was in bed and checking out my social media posts when I heard something strange. At first, I didn't throw my attention to the noise, but it happened again, so I was a bit scared. Surprisingly, the sound was coming out from my brother's room, which was right next to my room. It was about midnight, and due to complete silence, I can hear a few of his words. I was thrilled and jumped off my bed and straightly rushed to his room. When I went close to the door, I could hear him saying, Hmm, okay, it's a deal. Give me a couple of minutes and I'll be there. My heart started beating and I asked myself, What's going on here? Is my brother a criminal, or is he a member of any secret society? Maybe this is how he managed all those gifts for me. I was wondering if I should disclose all these things to my parents, but I changed my mind and decided to collect all evidence against him first. Then I will call the cops, but only if I find my brother guilty. I was busy making a decision and heard a sound. It looked like my brother opened his drawer. Maybe he was picking up some money, but right after that, there was complete silence. I took a deep breath and made my mind to talk to him. At the next moment, I kicked the door. But there was no one. I knew Freddy didn't have any supernatural powers, so definitely he couldn't be an invisible guy, but where the hell has he gone? I turned my head left to right and noted that the window isn't shut properly. When I went closer, I found Freddy. He was on the street and talking to two more guys. Before I figured out what's happening there, they all sat in a black car and left. I went back to my room and didn't shut the window. I guess if I do so, Freddy would face problems while getting in. The next day at school, everything was normal. Even I pretended to be normal wearing a fake smile. I don't know why the evil was ready to ruin the plan when we hoped for something good to happen. The same thing happened to me. I was wondering if I should open a conversation with Freddy on what happened last night. I messaged him and told him I urgently want to meet him. He instantly replied back and asked me to come behind the school. I felt relaxed. There's a ground behind the school where students usually avoid going to play. Sometimes teachers won't go there. On my way, I was lost in my thoughts. How to talk to Freddy how to put my questions, and how to deal with him if he is a criminal. But I was surprised when I reached the spot. I saw the same two boys I found last night with my brother. Freddy introduced them as Joey and Miki, his closest friends. I just waved my hand and got back to the class saying, Well, I have an urgent class to attend. That night I was on my bed but couldn't sleep. I got lost in my thoughts. I know they were making a secret plan. How to stop them? For a week, I constantly kept my eyes on Freddy. He just pretended to be normal, but I know his hidden secret. Not everything, but I almost knew that they were going to execute a secret plan. Maybe it was a bank robbery. I was waiting for the Saturday night, as I know this is the right time to disclose all his secret plans. Finally, the day arrived. Or, I mean, the night arrived. I was set with my cell phone. Of course, I didn't have a gun, but I wish I could have. I was waiting outside his door for the right moment to catch him. Freddy started talking. Hmm, right. Okay, that sounds like a plan. We're surely gonna be millionaires. 
I was surprised my brother at just 16 wanted to be a millionaire by committing crimes. What a foolish boy he was. What on earth made him think so? I kicked the door and got in, but again he vanished. I went to the window. Luckily, he was having a discussion with his friends. I jumped out and silently went behind the car they had. They were talking in a very low tone. I could hardly hear anything. Meanwhile, my phone rang. OMG. They noticed my presence. Before they reached me, I managed to open the trunk and got in. I was safe, but they started driving the car. After a long run, the car stopped. They opened the doors and got out. I couldn't see them, but now I can hear every single word crystal clear. One of them said, finally, we arrived at the spot. Another guy said, in the morning, I hate going to school, but at night, it feels like a place I love to go. I was shocked. Now they are at school. My school. Then my brother said, hey, let's get in before anyone notices us. They went inside. I hurriedly opened the trunk and followed their footsteps. I was right behind them, but they couldn't see since it was quite dark. I was surprised when they opened our sports storeroom and went in. I was always scared of the storeroom, so I had no choice but to wait outside. After a few minutes, they came out with some sports material. Ah, uh, now I get it. They are the thieves. They're stealing property of the school. So this is it. At this moment, I was sad and happy at the same time. My brother is not a member of any secret society, but the bad thing is that he is a thief and I have to stop him at any cost. They were getting back to the car, and I was chasing them silently. As soon as they arrived at the car, one of the guys noticed the sound of my footsteps. Actually, it was all my fault. I was walking right behind him. Now it's my time to panic. I turned my head left to right, but there was no one, so I screamed out. But Joey grabbed my hand and pulled me into the car. I know he won't hurt me, but I was feeling like I was kidnapped. They drove the car out of the town. It was dawn, and now we were far from the town. The car stopped at an old house. It's Miki's house. We got into the house. They tied me with a chair and taped my mouth. I was so nervous that I was feeling suffocated sometimes. Then my brother said, We just taped your mouth. Your nose is still open. And then all of them laughed at me. So silly I was. After a while, they looked frightened, as I knew their secret and I was more frightened than them because I was thinking they might kill me. At first, their conversation began with how to get out of all of this. They were busy, but I grabbed their attention by making some noise. Freddy stood up and came closer. He opened my mouth and asked me, Okay, sis, what do you want? I couldn't speak for a while, and after a few moments, I just said, Water. I want a glass of water. Freddy brought water, but he didn't tape my mouth, so now I can speak. Actually, I had a chance to save myself. I started wondering, and here comes an idea. I interrupted them with a question. A question for Freddy. I said, Freddy, are you sure Dad is not going to file a missing complaint? I threw the question at the right time because my dad called Freddy. The phone rang, but Freddy was afraid, so he didn't pick up and turned it off. Now, I was waiting for the right time to throw another question. I spent the entire day sitting on a chair. The boys were so confused that they forgot to have some food. So careless, they didn't even think of me. Well, it was about night and Freddy turned on the phone. There was a rush of messages, missed calls, and social media posts. But there was a message from Ketty. Actually, Fred's crush. She was so sad that she posted their old photos and just captioned, I miss you. Freddy's eyes popped out and he happily said, she is mine. I was relaxed. I thought now everything will be alright. But Miki put an excuse. Hey, what about your sister? She knew about us. Now they were staring at me, and this is the right time to throw another question. I said, how about making a deal? Joy said, hmm, a deal. And what's that? I put two conditions to Freddy. Pay Dad's credit card bill and promise me to never commit any crime. I will never tell anyone about you or your friends. The boys listened to my conditions, turned back, and took time to think. When they were busy making a decision, again the phone buzzed. 
Ketty messaged again. Your father filed a complaint. The message was enough for them to accept my deal. Freddy turned back to me and said, Okay, it's a deal. We set into the car and got back to the home. The car dropped us and flew away. We rang the doorbell. Freddy winked and said, Remember the promise, or Dad's gonna kill me. I said, Don't worry, Fred. I know my father is another sentimental guy after me and our family. Luckily, he opened the door. We were paralyzed for a moment, but my father hugged both of us and kissed our forehead. Before we said anything, he grabbed us into the house. Even Mom was happy. She cried and hugged Fred strongly. We sat on the couch and I created a fake story about Joy's illness and added that Freddy's phone ran out of juice. My parents were so happy that they didn't make any counter-question. I looked at Freddy and he took a long, deep breath. <sighs>